Guyana is the only country in the world that has a holiday called Ghana Day. That most what, Ghana us, Day. Ghana Day. It used what? to be celebrated on the first of January, mm -hmm. but your president came to Guyana, I think, a few years ago, two or three years ago, and they moved it to March sixth. Hey, what's good, family? Thank you very much for checking me out. Medo Bibiara said there, and the Ozine channel, I mean, I mean, work on YouTube now. We could be me video now. Uh, or if you be in a BB, I really appreciate you a lot. Once in a while, I will be speaking my language because uh, I am going to start uh, some kind of classes for uh, brothers and sisters who want to come and live in Ghana, especially in the central region of Ghana, because. In my region, we speak Fanti. I mean, other people speak tree, but I can teach more of the Fanti. In the Ebogwaya, Yanakasa, na Metro. So uh, we've been trying our best to learn and unlearn and real learn uh, amongst each other, especially the Africans in the motherland and Africans in the diaspora. When I say the diaspora, it is not only African Americans or the Canadian Black Canadians. We have uh, Trinidad and uh, Tobago. We have uh, Saint Lucia. We have Guyana. We have this. We have this. And it is my responsibility and your responsibility to bring this together and learn. Today, I have here with me my mother from another mother and another beautiful land to share a lot about what I know and what she knows and what other people must learn. So today I'm going to introduce to you Mama Judy. <laughs> Mama Judy, how are you doing? I'm well, how are you? I'm doing great. The first question I want to ask, are you having Rasta on? Is it dread? These are sister locks. They're smaller than dreads. Okay, but are they still dreads? You can say they're dreads. They're a type of dreads. You know how the uh, Kenyan men wear their hair? Yeah. It's like that. Okay, so I cannot say Rastafari? You can. <laughs> All right. So how is the day going? How has been your day so far before we started talking? Well, it's a beautiful day. Great weather. I just came in from outside and summer doesn't want to leave. So that's fine with me. I love summer. Summer doesn't want to leave. Then right. maybe I have to book my next ticket to wherever you are for it because the winter is started and I'm not used to it. Anyway, um, what has been the story behind Africa to you when you were growing up and Africans? I grew up in my first 10 years of life were in Guyana. Guyana. Uh, Guyana, South America, between Brazil, Venezuela, and Suriname. Mm -hmm. All right? And the culture in Guyana, first of all, I have to back up. Guyana is the only country in the world that has a holiday called Ghana Day. That most what, Ghana us, Day? Ghana Day. It used what? to be celebrated on the 1st of January, mm -hmm. but your president came to Guyana, I think, a few years ago, two or three years ago, and they moved it to March 6th. Okay, to commemorate the our independence. Yes. So okay. it's now celebrated on that day. So I said that to say the culture in Guyana up to the time when I left in 69 was wow. pretty much the same as it is in Ghana. Because when I landed in Ghana in 2019, mm -hmm. Although the skyline looked like New York, when I got to the ground, it was Guyana. The clothes. You, 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 the wait, 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 you, you, you found you found Guyana in Ghana. Yes, it's the same okay. thing. The same culture, the same food. It was worse when I got to Ashante land. Is that mm -hmm. Kumasi? Kumasi, yeah. I thought I saw all my father's relatives. I said, oh my God, they look like wow. that. So I saw people who looked like people in my family. Mm -hmm. And what made it worse was when we went to eat, it was the same food. Whoa. <laughs> Sorrel, ginger beer. Um, mm -hmm. You call it, uh, you call the rice. Um, Wachi. 
there's another name. And the, the, the whole of West Africa is fighting over who makes the best. Jalof, 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 yeah. We call it cook up rice. Cook up it's rice. It's the okay. same dish. Okay. And it's that way because when they took us as slaves, mm -hmm. because we were their investment, they fed us their food and it was killing us. A lot of us died before we got to the coast of South America. Yeah. So they started packing us on the ships with our food. And that's the history of food through from Africa to South America, to the Caribbean, to America, the Southern part of America. It's the same food. We all eventually called it different things. Yeah. But jollof rice in my country became cook up rice. In Trinidad, right. it's pilau. In Jamaica, it's rice and peas or peas and rice. They put one yeah. before the other. But it's the same food. In in uh, Louisiana, in the south southern part of the United States, it's black-eyed mm -hmm. peas. They call it hop and john. Mm -hmm. Same food. But we've been so separated, we don't recognize our similarities. Right. But because I came so young, I was able to tie things together. Mm -hmm. And what made it even better was when I traveled to Africa in 2019, I saw the source of everything. Yes. So the women were sitting in the marketplace with their dried shrimp in little bags. <laughs> in my country, because I was the last kid at home with mom, mm -hmm. she, she would put me to sit down with the martyr and pistol, pound mm -hmm. the, the shrimp. Whoa, you, you had that? Oh, yeah. I made, <laughs> I made fufu for my father. Mm -hmm. We made plantain fufu and fufu with yam. Saturday dish was fufu with fish stew, right? Mm -hmm. All of the stuff I ate in Ghana that's traditional, we did at home. In some Guyana. Americans, yeah. Some Americans from the southern part of the United States know those things. Mm -hmm. But the ones who live in the west and in the central and the east, the northeast, do not know them, but the people yeah. in the deep south know them. It's our history. So our food traveled with us. With us, yeah. We brought some of the seeds with us because we used to braid it into our corn row. Mm -hmm. So some of us were captured <laughs> and had the seeds of plants. The seeds were in our hair, right? Mm -hmm. At home, when someone is getting married, you must have a kwe kwe. Kwe kwe. Kwe kwe. What is that? <laughs> it's Wait, the is... ceremony for the bride before the wedding. Okay. All of them get together and they do this. Uh, it's it's part it's part of the Asante people. I don't know if mm -hmm. it's with the Asante mm -hmm. people. They're different groups, but we, they have that in Ghana. I asked. They said yes. So we traveled with our food. Mm -hmm. The names change from country to country and region country. to region. There's something they have, they call it gare in Nigeria. Gare, yeah. We call it grits in the South. Grits. They don't realize that that's the source of this thing is from the motherland. Mm -hmm. They think it's just, they can't explain it. And the whites don't know it because they don't know the source. They don't know, yeah. But I knew it because I am tricultural. Mm -hmm. I have Guyana, America, Africa. Yeah. And Guyana comes with the Caribbean nations because we were all ruled by the English. Mm -hmm. So we have that culture in common, but we call things by different names. By different so names. Gare in Africa is grits in America. Grits. It's the same thing. Wow. Same thing. And the wow. British started making something called Sago. That's from that Gare as well. Mm -hmm. They changed the names. So most of the foods in America that they think is such great food, great Southern food. It's African food. I know that because I've been in all three places. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So when I got to Africa, I saw my father's people. Mm -hmm. Right? From the, from the kente cloth to the yeah. wraps the women wear. Before I left home, my mom was training me how to carry a basket on my head. <laughs> She used to do that. It's it's the same culture. It's the same thing, yeah. It's the, the same, same culture. The From same sorrel culture. to ginger beer to to jollof, it's the mm -hmm. same, to the pounding the making the fufu kenke. Yeah. That's yeah, when I met my first person from Ghana. 
I said, what do you know about Kenke? They said, it's from Ghana. I said, it's from Guyana. And well, then you, I you have we, yes, we, we make it in the <laughs> banana leaves, but they were making it in foil because they were in America and they couldn't, they didn't know mm -hmm. where to get banana leaves in yeah. New Jersey. But I know, I've watched my mother made it, make it. Mm -hmm. I must have been like three, four, five, six years old. I used yes, to watch yeah. her make these things. I ate these things. Wow. And the other thing we have in common in my father's house, we were not really allowed to use sugar unless it was Christmas. But sugar. We sugar. Sugar is bad. So the mm -hmm. only time he let us indulge in it was at Christmas time. And mm -hmm. at that time, it wasn't a whole lot. There was constant medicines being given to mm -hmm. maintain your health, mm -hmm. right? You go into school, you're going to have a cleaning out. School is closed, you're having another cleaning out. You know what mm -hmm. the cleaning out is. All the yeah. Herbs. Yeah, the herb, yeah. And, oh, you had all of this food at Christmas cleaning out. So we were really sick at home. We were very healthy. And it's all the same culture. Wow. Well, I, 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 I am just imagining myself uh, landing in Guyana and then thinking that I'm back in Cape Coast. So I'm expecting to see my people and I will see my people. So that is that is the that is the feeling. That is what you what you felt when you when you when you got to Ghana. Listen, one of the big heroes of Guyana is Kofi. Kofi? Kofi. He gave the British hell. He, he revolted every time he had a chance. They have a statue of him in Georgetown, Guyana. You know, we didn't sit down and take slavery like they show in the movies. Lightly, we yeah. Fought. yeah. We yeah. fought. We fought to the... To the until it was so bad that they... Some of us in a place called Berbice... I don't know where my father's people landed because people were, my grandfather came okay. from Jamaica, okay. right? My grandmother and my father's side came from Barbados. They met mm -hmm. in Guyana. Mm -hmm. So the people in Berbice revolted until the, the British had to make a deal with them. You are not slaves. You can, you can work and make your own, you can trade and, do all of these things and make your own money. They were allowed to purchase their freedom, but they were not really enslaved to that extent because they never okay. stopped fighting. Mm -hmm. That's my father's side. And although my grandfather and grandmother came from Jamaica and Barbados, the Jamaicans fought just as much. There's there's record of, a record of them fighting 135 years. Whoa. They didn't stop. And we were using all the traditional tools because they, mm -hmm. the, the, the British soldiers would write home to the queen. We can't see who we're fighting. And we know what that's about. You know, mm -hmm. the trees are talking to us. The enemies yeah. over there, the birds are talking to us. Yes. You know that stuff. Yeah. So just like, um, just like the great Zulu warrior did, mm -hmm. he had the trees and everything in nature conspiring. They're over there. Come here. They thought they were fighting a... Hundred men. It was one man. Was Shaka, one man. Zulu. <laughs> Shaka Zulu. Yeah. Yeah. I remember oh. I watched that video when I was I was very young when I watched that video, and that and that movie still resonates. Like it's still anytime I I think about that movie, I really want to watch it again. Yeah. Because that that movie really depicts a lot of things that Africans used to do before the the white people came in, but now. The, I could see no difference in what you're saying, how you do things, and how we do things. Yeah. What do you think triggered that distance aside the people, you know, the slavery, you know, taking you from Africa and then going there? Looking at the different the, the similarities, how come we are still not able to see that? Guyana and Africa or Guyana and Ghana and Guinea and Kenya and Rwanda, Togo, we are one, one people. What they did, they did very effectively. When we landed on these different coasts, they separated parent from child. The, they broke the family up. They did the same thing in Africa because I have friends who said, who graduated, friend of mine from Liberia graduated valedictorian of his school. 
They taught them English. He said his parents came to his graduation. I said, did they speak English? He said, no. I said, so why didn't you give the speech in your native language? Because the Catholic school told them they had to make it in English. English I said, yeah. so your parents never understood what you did. He said, no. And I said, that's the problem. There, once you remove the parent from the child, there's a break in, in yeah. the stories that the kids would learn. So they picked up a lot of false stories. They mm -hmm. picked up stories from the ones who conquered them and their own story they never knew because they never heard it from the parents. Right. There's something that's called throughout Africa, it's, it's, it's like an initiation into adulthood. Mm -hmm. You've heard of it, I hope you've yes. heard of it. Yes. So when you're about nine, 10, 11, 12, if you're 13, you're old, you get this thing done. You go with the adults into the woods or into a secluded place. You're taught everything you need to do. Yeah. Some spiritual things you must do. In Trinidad, they call it morning ground. Morning in, ground. Know, where you go, you do the ritual, they leave you in the dark alone. You get your visions and you learn everything you need to know. I've met some of these kids, one or two of them. Mm -hmm. By the time they get here, and let's say they're in grad school, they know everything. It's just mm -hmm. a formality. You go through grad school, you're going to get the degree anyway. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's what we need to bring back. That's the missing piece for today. And it's happening. They did a thorough job in Africa because a lot of the kids I spoke with had no clue what I was talking about, unless Africa is the home of the secret societies. So mm -hmm. Africans can keep a secret, you know that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not sure if they were keeping it a secret or if they didn't know, but based on the results I'm seeing, I'm thinking they don't know because if they knew what's going on in Africa right now, wouldn't yeah. be happening. Yeah. So I'm thinking from the results I'm seeing, a lot of people don't know, a lot of people have moved over to Catholicism mm -hmm. or uh, what is it? Um, the Arab faith, Muslim or whatever. Muslim, yeah. do. Some of them are even studying Hindi. So it's like you don't have a home, but mm -hmm. you do. Yeah. You do. You do. You, you, do. Have a home. you do have a home, yeah. You have a tradition. Yeah. Go back to your tradition. I tell all Africans that I meet, I ask them the same question. Why are you here? Why did you come? So when we came to America, I was the youngest in the family. So I got to see, and kids can be cruel, right? Mm -hmm. Young <laughs> kids are cruel. If you're an yeah. adult, you have some parameters. You know, yeah. not, you know what to do, what not to do. They cross every line possible. Mm -hmm. So what I learned is that we have to take back our children from this vast wilderness mm -hmm. called European civilization. Yeah. We have a civilization, we have a culture, we have a history, and we need to own it. There's a story I like to tell. It's a story called A Thousand Acres of Diamonds. Mm -hmm. It's a small book. Very. I bought several of them because I figured when I get back over there, I can't find it. It's a story about a man who had a farm mm -hmm. and he lived on the farm, in the country, and everybody around him was leaving to go to the city. Yeah, He was getting upset, really feeling bad about himself. Everybody's going to the city to get seek their fortune. And so he finally decided he's going to sell his farm. He's going to the city to seek his fortune. Then a guy came along and he was looking for a farm. He said, look, you can have my farm. I'll sell it to you. Sold it to the guy. He took the money. He went to the city to look for his fortune. The guy who bought the farm came from the city and he was disgusted. So he started plowing the fields because he's looking forward to planting and reaping his crop. As he's plowing the field, the rakes started hitting some rocks and he got tired of the rocks. So he bent down and said, what are these rocks? He bent down and he looked at the rock. It was a diamond. Wow. He had a thousand acres of diamonds that the young man who went to the city to seek his fortune sold mm -hmm. him for a pittance. Now, all of his wealth he sold to this guy. Yeah, it's gone. That's the story of Africa. <laughs> that's the story of Africa. That, 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 that's, that's, that's really deep, you yeah. know, but that, that's really deep. But, but so it means that in, in a nutshell, Africans do not know 
what they have. What they have. They have not learned. They've not been told. You must treasure what you have. You must treasure what you have. And we we don't value. We must start valuing. Let me not use the negative. I'm going to use the positive. We must start valuing what we have. From our hips to our lips to the color of our skin to the texture of our hair to our very vivid imagination and creative minds, we must value. But we're looking outside. So when I came here, um, in in Guyana, we would get Reader's Digest, and so they would have these images of white people painted in like mm-hmm. a tan or brown color. So I thought yeah. they were the colored people. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a name for myself. I said, look at the colored people. Yeah. When I got here, I was told, no, these are the white people. I said, why? They look colored in the book. <laughs> and I started, it's a 10-year-old kid. Yeah. So I started observing America. And by the time I turned 11, I was reading the Martin Luther King speech. I have a dream. And I started to cry uncontrollably. And I'm wondering, right. why am I crying? Then my grandmother said, I'm going to take you to Washington to see the White House. So to get the bus, we had to go to Harlem. We lived in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And when I got to Harlem, it was total devastation. I started to cry. She said, why are you crying? I said, the people are living in the streets. They're not, they're not wearing clothes. A lot of them were half naked. I didn't know it at the time, but they were strung out on drugs. And the place was strewn with garbage. I mean, this is not the America they showed me in Reader's Digest. Um, Yeah. I started to cry. And then we got on the bus. And my grandmother is trying to console me. At that point, I wanted to go back to Guyana. I said, this place is disgusting. So we got to the White House. And there were homeless people right outside the fence at the, the White, White House, House yeah. living in the streets. And again, I started to cry. I shed a lot of tears when I came to America. I said, oh, my God. She said, what's wrong now? I said, but it's supposed to be the richest country in the world. In the Why world, yeah. Living in front of the the presidential palace. Because, you know, in our country where the president lives. Yeah, you can't just, yeah. You can't just treat it like this. Mm -hmm. But in America, homeless people of all colors, but mostly black, were living outside the fence of the White House. I cried. I said, I locked myself up in my house until I went to college. I think by the time I got to college, I was 17. And I had to go out. But it was sad. To me, it was very sad. Mm -hmm. But then I started to learn about the great divisions in America. Yeah. Everything is along race, color, um, more so than economics, although economics played a part. In Guyana, it's classism. You're not in this class. You cannot get into this class, even if you go and get the money. This is old money. That's what... (laughs) That's what rules in Guyana. And that came from the British and their nonsense. And and I would say that this classism is being portrayed in Ghana as well. I saw it. Don't think yes, I was if, it. Yes, if you if if you don't if if you don't have this, you don't have this amount of money, if you are not in this kind of you know this kind of uh, uh, um section, mm-hmm. um yeah, you can you can pick it up. You can yeah. pick it up. Yeah, and it's and it's happening in Ghana, like I said, where people feel that if if you are not, if you are, if if you don't have, you can't be here. It's garbage. Right? I saw yeah, that. Yeah, it's garbage. Yeah, I see it in the movies too that are made in Nigeria. Yeah, it's even even in, in our in our in our in our movies. At the end of the day, the movies that were classified as less people watch. Are the ones that are trending now. Mm-hmm. The so-called English movies that they were looking so, you know, colon- uh, uh, Europeanized and everything. Now in Ghana, nobody watches those movies. They don't even, they don't even produce it. Yeah. A, a quick, a quick one that I wanted to ask you. What was the the typical Guyana religion like before? you moved to the U.S. or before you came to Africa to experience, what was religion like in Guyana? It's the same as in Africa. The, the, the Catholic Church has left its mark mm-hmm. from Protestant to Catholic to Anglican, the same nonsense. And But for me, I've always been different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been different. So 
I'll give you an example. When I was about four, my parents sent me to Sunday school. So I got to Sunday school, it's in a neighbor's house. And she pointed to a picture of a white man with a son in his chest. And she mm -hmm. said, this is your father in heaven. I heard nothing else that teacher said. I had to remember what she said. This is your father in heaven. So when she was done preaching, I went home. My mom and dad were in the kitchen. My mom is cooking. My dad is reading the paper. So I pulled my mom's skirt. I showed her the picture. I said, who is he? She said, that's <laughs> your father. And I pointed to my father. I said, who is he? She said, that's your father. I'm confused. I said, who is he? <laughs> I, the picture. I said, who is he? She said, that's your father. I threw away the picture because that father in heaven is not as close as the one in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And the one in the kitchen can administer punishment and he can feed me. So I'm going to deal <laughs> with this one in the kitchen. And that was my first rejection of religion. Of religion. Because they lied about my father. My father was in the kitchen reading his newspaper. So I could <laughs> never accept anything else after that. But mm -hmm. in terms of spirituality, there's an undercurrent. When we were brought over, they would punish us for using our traditional things because these traditional things worked. Yeah. Traditional justice works. You know, the Oba would come and say, okay, tell us what you see this person doing two days ago. And the person reading the palm would say exactly what they did. Those mm -hmm. things worked. Mm -hmm. All of that went on the ground. Even our names were beaten out of us. How Kofi remembered his name and how my uncle Kwaku remembered his name. Kwaku, yeah. Kwaku, it was born on a Wednesday, right? Yeah, Wednesday. I was born on a Wednesday. So you are Ikua. Ikua. I said, the undercurrent and, and voodoo, the rituals we did in Africa were outlawed until I think it was 2005 when they made it legal. But everybody who knew anything knew this was going on. But yeah. nobody admitted to it, right? Because during the slavery time, we were beaten to forget those things. Yeah. And because we were separated from the adults, as kids, when you beat kids and treat them a certain way, they grow up with a certain amount of ignorance and docility. So it's still in Guyana. It is still, it's all over Central and South America, right? I see people who, Puerto Ricans, for example, mm -hmm. were told to lighten up the race, right? So if, if your mother was raped by one of these guys in slavery, that the product of that rape, if they survived, because we were aborting, we were aborting these instances of pregnancies. We brought our medicine with us. So mm -hmm. we knew what to drink to stop it because it was painful. This person who is lording over you impregnates you. You have a kid growing in you that you don't want. You want to stop it. So we had medicine for that too, right? Yeah. But for those who didn't take the medicine or didn't know about the medicine, because a lot of these kids grew up without the adults, mm -hmm. you have the kid. So what are you going to tell the kid? It's 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 painful being this color. They beat us because of the color. Lighten up the race. Mm -hmm. Get another person who looks like you. Have children or get yeah. a white person. Lighten up the race. So a lot of people, a lot of these people are walking around today. They do look white, except when they step into the sun. You step into the sun with any amount of black blood, the sun is going to kiss you. Mm -hmm. And you're going to change color without tanning lotion. That's yeah. how we know them. So a lot of them looking a certain way are still visiting Ogun and Yemeya and all the African gods and doing the ritual behind closed doors. I've been in rooms with these people. Mm -hmm. They would mm -hmm. never admit it publicly because publicly they're passing as white. Yeah, yeah. To the extent that they'll be bigoted against you, right? A lot of them wouldn't want to talk to you. But they know a generation or two ago, grandma looks like you or grandfather like you, yeah. like you. And most of all, the sun knows who you are because the sun will kiss your color back. Right. But a mm -hmm. lot of that goes on. A lot of that goes on. But to answer your question, do we still practice the traditions? The traditional, yeah. A few people do, not as many as before. 
because people are moving away, but there's a core group that still remains. And everything from medical healing mm -hmm. to repairing your body, the knowledge is there, but it went deep underground. It's very prominent in Bahia, Brazil. Okay. It's prominent in, Brazil. in Haiti. I think the people in Haiti are from Benin, mostly from the area in Africa called Benin, mm -hmm. I think. I get that feeling. I see the resemblance. Okay. Right? I see Ghana in Guyana. Ghana in Guyana. See the whole of West Africa in the Caribbean and in America. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Now, the, 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 the basic thing that we are all trying to fight for, mm -hmm. to get it to stand, is what can we do to bridge the gap. Now, I I wanted, I'm gonna use this, I wanted to go to Jamaica or um, Trinidad and Tobago, that was this year. And before I get there, there's no direct flight from Ghana, West Africa to the Caribbean. Let me, let me, let me just take it like that. From West Africa to Caribbean, there's no direct flight. Yes. You either have to go through Europe. Yeah or the US or Canada or the UK. So I decided to apply through UK. Mm -hmm. I did all the document that they needed. It was, it was just a transit. And they gave me a response and say, we have refused you. And you don't have any, you, you, you can't go for an appeal or whatever. So I, then I was stuck in Ghana. I can't go anywhere. No, that is, that is transportation. Now, within ourselves, as the people, what are some of the things we can do to really come back to our senses and say, no, Ghana, Jamaica, Ghana, Guyana, Trinidad, and Benin, Togo, Nigeria, we are one. So what, what is that thing separating us? What do we do? We are looking at what can we do to bring, to bridge all of us together? I think the youth of Africa can do it more effectively than the older folks. Okay. I, as I said before, the Europeans did a great job of separating us. Mm -hmm. Culturally, they separated parent from child, right? Mm -hmm. Geographically, they came up with these uh, borders, these crazy borders that serves only the European purpose, or I should say the Western purpose, because Africa is the force being applied on Africa, we call it the extraction force. Extraction they come and take force. everything they need to build their economy. You're mm -hmm. not allowed to go to uh, Burkina Faso, for instance, to get this material. You're not allowed to go to Namibia to get that material. When I went back to Guyana after having left in 69, I went back in, I think, 96 or 97. And the president had the trade agreement with America displayed at the museum. I said, that's a funny place to put the trade agreement. <laughs> so I started reading it. And essentially, I was shocked because this is what it said. You can grow bananas. You can only sell one to Canada, one to UK, two to America. You cannot sell to any Caribbean nations. You must destroy the excess production. Essentially, that was a trade agreement. So I tell young people, go read your trade agreements before you condemn your leaders. And some of them are worthy of being condemned, but some of them are also, their hands are tied. Yeah. Um, so they're made to put their bank in Europe. Mm -hmm. they put, even the president of my country had to bank in Switzerland. You ask yourself, why is everybody banking in Switzerland? Who said that? Why are we doing it? Mm -hmm. So it's like a kid who's been abducted, lost every piece of knowledge about where they lived originally. Where they live, yeah. But they're being told, now you must go to this room and do this thing and go to that room and do this other thing and go down to the lower level and do this thing. Sooner or later, that kid is going to figure out, I can get all of these things done in the kitchen. Why yeah. not go to the different rooms? So right. Africa is in that position right now. Mm -hmm. Africa is beginning to ask, and it's the youth that are beginning to ask it. Why is it like this? Why do I have to leave Africa? Let me back up a little bit. America runs a, the greatest marketing 
program in the world. It, and Americans don't know this because they're not the object of that marketing campaign. But overseas, in other countries, America is made to look like- It's heaven. Utopia, <laughs> yes. And so you would kill your mother to get to America. You would risk your life crossing through North Africa into Europe to get to America. You're doing things to get to America when you get here. It hasn't changed in 400 years. You still have to work. Try not working and see how you'll live. And see and see what will happen to you. <laughs> it's, 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 it's serious. And, and we would sit here and said, oh, my God, at least at home we had fruit trees. We could go pick fruits and eat free. It dawned on us. So America, I love that. I, I respect America. I respect mm -hmm. their game. They have the best game on the planet. Mm -hmm. They do. America, the American government is gangster. <laughs> it's gangster. It's, yeah. gangster. It is, it is, it's, a, it's such a smooth operation. Mm -hmm. You don't know. You think you know how it works. I tell my American friends, you don't know what daddy does to put food on the table. Don't tell me anything. I know what daddy does. When I was three or four, I was in my front yard playing and a war plane flew over me so low, I could see the faces of the soldiers on the plane. They were dropping leaflets. This is around, this is around the time of the Bay of Pigs. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. I was scared. I ran inside. I gave my dad the leaflet. And what they were doing was protecting America from communism. Yeah. Why was it communism? Why did they have this thing in Cuba? Why? A lot of people don't ask the question. They just, they they just, just flow go with to it. school and they get administered to. It's like going to church. The, the pastor will administer the gospel to you. If you're pregnant and you're given birth, no one can administer birth to you. You have to go through the process. You have to feel the pain. You're going to bleed out. The child is going to come out of you. You have to look at it that way. It cannot be administered. Well, you will dilate and then this infant will come out. There's no feeling attached to this. Thing. But when you live through it, you feel it. You know it. You own it. Right? Right. That's the truth. I ran back inside. I told my, I gave my father the booklet, the leaflet. And he said not to worry. Fast forward. I'm now in America. I'm about <laughs> 17 years old. There's a show on a TV station called Channel 13. And the name of the show is the CIA in Georgetown. And what they did show what happened in 1962, the thing that terrified me. Mm -hmm. I said, oh my God, is that what that was? Oh my God, I was so scared. These guys are doing things that are scaring little kids. When I came, now I'm mm -hmm. 17, I'm looking back. What happened? My next door neighbor were Indian people. We were African. We're all black skinned people. Yeah. When I look, when, when the thing happened in my country, my father and his best friend, our next door neighbor, who was mm -hmm. Indian, locked up the women and children in the houses and went up to the main street. They say, stay here. We're going to protect you. Yeah. When I saw the film, you know what it was about? It no. was about turning one race against the other. Indians and Africans couldn't be friends. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, my God, but they didn't know my father and this guy were best friends. We're best friends, yeah. And so we didn't know. It's like Rwanda. You killed your neighbor. The because genocide, someone yeah. on the street told you, you know your neighbor hates you. You mm -hmm. know your neighbor wants to kill you. And that's how it happened in Rwanda. I met people from Rwanda. And they said, I asked the question, how could that happen? They said there were these European guys in the streets telling us that that group hated us. And another group told the other group that our group hated them. And so they fueled the fire. And that's how the massacre happened. Yeah. Except my father and his best friend went to protect their wives and children. And children. And when I saw this film on Channel 13, I was stunned. I said, how could that be? We didn't know. Then I heard the President Kennedy said, we will defend our democracy. I said, wow. So who was defending us? It's a crazy world. It's a crazy world.
you asked me how we can get over it. Yes. Change your school curriculum. Mm -hmm. I can tell that what you're being taught is that you have no history, that everything started for you when the white people showed up. Yeah. You have no history prior to that. And so you're going to school thinking I am nothing. And so I must spend every bit of my energy to become like these people. I will wear a wig or a weave. Mm -hmm. I will straighten my hair. I will bleach my skin. I will speak like the queen. I will be anything but myself. I will marry this white woman because this is the prize. I will marry that white man because that's the prize. You no longer respect yourself. And that's what your education is teaching you. So how can you change your curriculum? It's got to be based on your real history. It's out there. It's been documented. It's been documented. Yeah. It's all over the world. The evidence is all over the world. Follow John Henry Clark, Van Sertima. These guys, Lewis, all of these guys documented our history. But because we're busy going after this curriculum that's been put mm -hmm. in front of us as the only thing you should learn, is anybody questioning what they're learning in Africa? No. Are people asking questions? But what did we do? Are we really nothing? Why are we here? I go back to people like the Dogon of Mali. When they said to the Europeans, we're from this place, this particular point in the sky with the dog star and, and the planet they now call Sirius. They didn't discover Sirius. The Dogon so-called mythology told them about the dog star and Sirius. That's your history, all right? That's you. Yeah. So when I'm looking to, I'm researching architecture in Africa and I'm saying, how can poor people afford houses? The cement is expensive, the wood is expensive. Mm -hmm. What were they? I went to Namibia two years ago and I went to a place where I saw a house made out of mud bricks. It was a round house, I forget the official name of it. And it has the grass root roofs mm -hmm. that are, they keep the place cool. I stood inside of this house. It was hot outside. It was really hot outside. This is Southern Africa and it's in, it's in the summertime. So it was hot. I stepped into this house made out of mud bricks and uh, the grass roof, the circular, it was cool. I said, I like this. I felt a certain sense of peace when I stepped into this natural structure. I said, so why did we stop using this? So I started reviewing history books. I'm an avid reader, you can see all my Yeah, books. I can see that. So it said they were condemned by the Europeans. The Europeans called Africans savages for living in mud houses. Mm -hmm. But I have pictures of Europeans living in mud houses in the winter storms of Europe. Get over the lies, revisit your culture, mm -hmm. sit down with the older people in your communities, right. yeah, your information, okay? Mm -hmm. Respect yourself again and know that you have acres of diamonds under your feet and you're running away from it. The youth want to do this. This is this is getting this is this is my last question mm -hmm. that is going to be a little bit dicey. The the youth of Africa want to do this. Uh -huh. Um I know possibly you know of Wadamaya. Mm -hmm. Thank God for what am I? He <laughs> did for me what no one was able to do for me. Really? See, the 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 two things happen. Two okay. things. I'm, okay. I'm going to give another story again. There's a place called Montclair, New Jersey. It's a place mm -hmm. where it had you have the wealthy people on the hill, mm -hmm. and there, the lower hill, the bottom of the hill, is where the people who used to work as servants for these people, but those yeah. people are no longer there. But that's that's the history of the town. So a family, a white family that lived up in Upper Montclair went to Ghana mm -hmm. for summer vacation. Mm -hmm. They came back, they left in August and came back in August, took the kids out of school, put a for sale sign up, told the realtor, just tell us when it's sold, we're going. Said, where are we going? Where are you going? Ghana. They found well, their that, fortune. I said, wait a minute. The and white family? Yeah, the news is always telling you there's this war and that war and this mm -hmm. other yeah. war. 
I never believed the things with the flies. That was a commercial, but mm -hmm. the wars scared me. Okay. I said, so I don't have anybody to travel to Ghana with. How can I get there? What am I put up his videos? I said, I've been waiting for you. I have <laughs> done this. I told him, you got to go to Guyana. And he did go. I said, you got to go to these places and ask them this. And he was doing it. He had, oh, he opened up Africa to me. What am I? What am I? What am I yeah. is the president of Africa. <laughs> That's all I have to say. He okay. opened up the possibilities. Mm -hmm. He opened up, he showed the possibilities. And he's saying, come and invest. Yeah. Come and invest. Hello. Do you need airport pickup and drop off in Ghana? Get a best experience with AK's Possibility Concert. Thank you. School is where you kill time until you can decide what you want to do. Right. Most of the people who made things in this country didn't finish college. Mm -hmm. A lot of them didn't even start college. And some of them are world famous today. I'm sure you know the biggest one I'm talking about. Uh, We're using the technology right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> didn't, finish, didn't finish his first year. Did the parents say, fin put that aside and finish your education? No. No. Education is where you park yourself up until you decide, okay, what can I do? But they're going to school with, oh, I'm going to get this piece of paper and I'm going to be important and the government will give me a job. That's mm -hmm. garbage. The government's mm -hmm. there to administer. The, they're the CFO of the country. Of the country, yeah. There's a board that sits behind that CFO. The CFO answers to the board. Mm -hmm. I don't know who the board members are. All right? Mm -hmm. But that CFO is not creating jobs for you. The system that's running the country will allow you to go create things, create jobs, sell your stuff in the market, and it revolves. Yeah. It revolves. And that's where the profits are made. Having nothing else to do, I sat down and studied the American machine. And that's what I came up with. I said, yeah. the presidents aren't really in charge. There's a board behind them. I don't know who is on the board. But for colonial countries, and you're all still colonial countries. I don't care. Mm -hmm. They told you they gave you independence. They told, Guyana, <laughs> they told Guyana the same thing. But at the yeah. same time, they turned around and said, you have to bank your money in Switzerland. Who does this? Are you really independent? No. no. Not if you're telling me where to bank my money. I decide where to bank my money. Not if you're charging me money for the government house, the people of this land constructed. And because you are no longer here, we have to pay you the rent for that house. I would burn the house down. Let's start <laughs> over. I owe you nothing. We're going to yeah. build the house, right? Mm -hmm. But you're going along with it because your intellectuals grew up in this sort of training, mental training. And that's what it is. It's a mental training. I, I watch them on TV. They speak the King's English. <laughs> yes. I'm looking at it. I said, this is BS. Why are they saying this? I suggest, and I put it online. I suggest you get in touch with some HBCUs, historically mm. black colleges and universities in America. Okay. The history is well documented there. Mm -hmm. Look for some African-American scholars mm -hmm. on the internet. Get in touch with them. Get a curriculum that you can use. If I were to write the curriculum for Ghana right now, it will be history. You must take it. And it's going to be our history going back to when we ruled. Africa had four major regions. Yeah. It was ruled by region. And yeah. region had its leader. And underneath that leader were the different sects that comprised that particular region. People tell me it's got to be democratic. I don't know what that means. I know it cannot be a dictator. It can't, let me, let me back up. Remember we spoke about um, Chaka Zulu? Yeah. What, how did Chaka Zulu come to power? What was he famous for? They didn't show it in the movie. Why, was, I... why was he fighting these Dutch people? How was he able to fight them and, and kept them at bay while his people escaped spirituality, traditional stuff. Leaders were chosen that way. Mm -hmm. Nobody said, vote for me. No, you don't have the power. We have to see. We have to literally see. Yeah. 
who is coming with the power. It wasn't a vote. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I understand it perfectly. So we need to do that. I was in Namibia and I stood in that museum and I read everything about Shaka Zulu. He was so good when they finally, and they didn't capture him. He told his people, he said, I will kill myself. They cannot kill me. So when he knew he had done as much as he could from the help he got from nature, he took his life. These people were so mystified. They thought they were fighting hundreds of men. It was one man. They chopped his head off of his body, opened his skull to see if he had a different makeup. Different. Every other. They, and they have a picture of them doing this. Mm -hmm. I have it on my phone. I, it was so stunning to me, I took a picture. So when you do it right and honor your traditions and your ancestors, that's what happens. You get the help from the places all around you. When you get to Trinidad, go see whoever the greatest Shango is in Trinidad and get lessons. Shango. Shango. Yeah. How would you it's, do the that? Same, it's the same as Oba or Kufitsi. It's the same title. OK. You understand? Yes, I understand. OK. All right. All right. Uh, we've done, we were looking at 30 minutes. We've done exactly one hour. Yes. And, so I'm and it's, and it's, and it's, I, I, to me, we could go and go and go and go because it's, it's also a refreshing and an educational moment for me. Mm -hmm. I have decided to, before this, I want to say a very big thank you to Ebusian. His name is uh, Mr. Albion Mens. Uh, he's been mentoring me each and every time he watches my video. He calls me up and says, Echo, you are doing a great job. And he's a lecturer in one of the universities in the United States, I think somewhere in Missouri. Really? Yes, yes, yes. So um, there is a lot we can talk about, but just like we've started now, there is more to do. There is more to talk about. And I personally, like I said, I, I want to put myself, avail myself to be able to pre present a platform for such conversations it's for us to yes for us to talk to people because what you have what you have shared right now mm -hmm. if if my the government of ghana should take a lesson they, they might they would they, they they will pick one or two right so it is it is my way that we keep going i keep availing myself for, for this kind of conversation to go on and all that so the final word that you would like to say to the people of guyana the people of ghana and the whole African root itself. I wouldn't say African Americans, African descent, uh, descendants, no. Africans, what is your last word for us? The snake has its tail in his mouth right now, cannot be stopped. That's a full circle. That's what that means. I understand. Okay, full circle. Full circle. We have to complete it. Right, all right. Thank, Thank you. you for this. Thank you all so right. much.